the song that we did yesterday. It was a band favorite. My bandmates all really loved it, and we wanted it to be on the album, so I just rewrote the lyrics, and that's kind of where we all were at. The band had heard the song, but like we had never tried to play it together. We recorded this song on the very first day after the Trump inauguration. It's fair to say it's an incredibly divided time. As the song was building and we were trying to visualize the protests that are going on around the world, it was a great soundtrack to that curiosity. It was really in my mind that we weren't there. It would have been a really inspirational sort of experience, but I think that it's also so important to like make art and be visible as an artist. And in moments like this, like moments of political turmoil, you should bring your skills to the table in a way that affects change or benefits people. I'm Katie Crutchfield, and my project is called Waxahachie, and I'm here recording a song called No Curse for Shaking Through. Yesterday, I was joined by my drummer, Ashley Arnwine, and my bass player, Catherine Simonetti. Over the last few months, we all got together and made this record that we're all really psyched about. And I want to include my sister in that. She played on the record, too. She wasn't with us. But the four of us, we've just been through a lot together. We love each other, and it's a great vibe. So I really wanted to like try and bring that into the studio. And then it goes back into the chorus. So at the end, we'll bring the little beginning of that between like the last verse and then the, the last chorus. I personally love it when a band does not come in with an overthought song when they're here for Shaking Through because the series is particularly well suited towards capturing the openness that comes with something like that. We'll do that like four times and then we'll come in with what's going to be like the chorus part. I love it when they don't have attachments and it's still in the discovery phase. I mean, Katie had the song, she knew the melody, they knew the feel and the vibe of it, but that's where No Curse was. New enough that the band was learning it, you know, right before our eyes, right with us. It's intro, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, intro, chorus. But that's okay if you don't, you can't remember that. I'm telling you this as much for myself as for you. So okay. let's try it and then uh, see what happens. Okay. okay. No Curse. I mean, man, it's anthemic. I challenge anyone not to sing along to this song. And it was just over too quickly. It sounds awesome. Cool. It okay. sounds, sounds really good. Awesome. I, I have a little bit of a question, actually. I suggested that they just sort of elongate the end chorus, give the listener just a little bit more time to indulge in that. So, like, the hook of the whole song is that I. You know what I mean? Yeah. It sounds to me like you're going to go, ah. Anything that I'm doing, I usually have like a vision for it, but I really try and stay super open-minded having that kind of dynamic back and forth. It's another thing that's super creatively fulfilling. It was a really good process to kind of work on that together. I could like maybe repeat one of the lines and then kind of just like let it play out for a little bit and then maybe repeat the line exactly. one more time. And then be, let's try that. Yeah. So you guys don't change what you're doing, but I'll change what I'm doing. But it's still extending? Yeah, extend it. Extend Last it. year we did all of our recordings for Shaking Through with road mics. So this time we wanted to sort of set up little A-B situations with the mics we use here at the studio every day. Generally, we use AEA R84s in our weather vane room mic configuration, but we A-B those with the road NTRs. And I actually, in the mix, ended up using the NTRs. They had a scooped mid-range in a way that kind of just worked better for the rooms. On the bass amp, generally we're using the U67, but we decided to A-B that against the Rode K2. And I actually ended up using the K2 in the mix. It had a texture in the high end that just like worked with the bass so much better on this song. That one definitely surprised me. And we recorded it clean, knowing that we would very likely distort it. So in mixing, we added a parallel send through an actual rat pedal, driving it pretty hard. And it really blends the bass back with the guitars in a cool way. So it's just 
was, I think that wasn't quite. It's not quite as long, but I think I, I think it felt natural to end it there. I'm starting to feel really like good about how we're playing together. Yeah. Um. So let's run through it a couple more times. Yeah. yeah. You know, me and my sister were learning about a lot of music at a time where we really didn't have any friends. We were just kind of like doing our own thing. And every single day after school, we would come home and then we would just play music until it was dark outside. And then we played a show at this place in Birmingham called Cave Nine. It's not around anymore, but it was like a DIY space. And we made like so many new friends. It really served as a safe environment for young people to like play shows. I mean, there were kids at our high school that were into music, but we didn't really connect until we all ended up at this safe haven, which was Cave Nine. Through that, we all kind of formed this big community of kids who were playing in punk bands, mostly. Once I found all those people, that feeling of like intimidation by the more straight lace kids that you would come across in a Southern high school, it just went away. We just kind of had each other's backs and we all sort of knew that what we were doing was like cool to us. So that was like pretty cool and powerful to like find your people. Hey, me too. Yeah. That felt good. That felt really good. Can we come listen to that? Yep, come listen to it. It was awesome. So for the last year or so, we've done mostly sort of very abstract, conceptual songs. And this one is very visceral. I've been sort of dying for that. It just has so much like anthemic, sort of like rock and roll spirit that I think it came together really nicely and really quickly. Cool. I think that's great. Yeah. How do you guys feel? It's awesome. Sounds great. Cool. Sounds awesome. Well, what do you guys, what should we do now? Let's keep it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be just super easy to go into guitars. Okay, you know? yeah, that sounds good. I'm cool with that. We originally yeah. thought the guitars would be you know, a little on the cleaner uh, side, you know, right on the edge of distortion. So we originally set up the Champ and the Supro that way. Katie's got a Rickenbacker 360 that has the two guitar outputs, right? So you can take one of those and plug them into two amps. It was a great sound, but I've been really, really, really wanting to record loud guitars for a while now. Uh, are we gonna stick with the stamps though? Uh, no, let's do something really loud. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, and like fuzzy too. Yeah, like, yeah, Bad Cat, right? Yeah. Wow. The Bad Cat amp, it's got just that excellent balance of like muscle and jangle. This song suited it perfectly. I should mute it? Okay. You should mute it. Yeah, exactly. Cool. All right. All of those guitars went through both an R84 and the Rode NTR. And those went into two AML 1073 Neve clones. In the mix, I actually just ended up using 100% of the R84s, just because they were cohesive and nice and all meshing together really well. Instead of using the different microphones, to add depth to a part or to make doubles feel wider, her guitar parts themselves ended up adding together really well. Nothing was on top of anything unless we wanted it to be. Katie ultimately leaned towards more muscly and driven guitars. So yeah, we, we leaned with her. It was cool. Cool. Sounds wicked. Cool. Do you want to double it since we're doing the left and the right thingy? Sure, yeah, Let, let's for do sure. That. Let me, let me just tune again. Okay, yeah, sense. yeah. Writing lyrics, writing songs has always been the best way for me to like process my feelings and emotions. When I made my last record, I was really kind of far away from myself and I just couldn't get there. I couldn't be honest with myself. I sort of justified it to myself and be like, well, this is like a challenge for me. I can't get to that place. So I was trying to pull from other places. Like I was reading a lot of poetry. I was like really trying to write lyrics that were more abstract. It's stimulating to like challenge yourself. I think that they turned out really cool and I'm proud of it, but I feel a lot closer to the lyrics of this record. They're the exact opposite. They're like the most literal, the most honest, perhaps the most honest I've ever been with myself. Hey, do you ever picture the, the, the doo -doo 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 happening in any of the body of the song? That would be really cool. It could come in yeah. at the end. It could come in at the end. I really like that idea. That would 
The hook that the song starts with is this awesome arpeggiated riff, and Katie wanted to do that on a 12 string. So we, we have this Eastwood 12 string guitar. It was such a cool hook. And again, we get to that point in the end of the song where we want to give all the more reasons for the song to keep developing. So we brought that hook back in and it worked awesome. That 12 string into like full onslaught wall of guitars. It's a great juxtaposition. The lyrics on the record are all really cohesive. They're all pretty much about toxic relationships, like people who make you feel like you're doing something that you're not. If you've ever like been in an argument with someone or like a fight with someone and like they aren't taking your concerns seriously at all, they're sort of just assigning worth to what you're saying. That's kind of what that's about. Relationships like that, unfortunately, I feel like I've had a few in my life, and I, I'm sure that everybody has those behaviors and people are really common. And I think that you kind of just have to like take yourself out of it. In sort of like what I am singing about in this song, the only way that I could like see clearly was to just kind of take a step away. How do you feel about jumping around a little? Like, like moving? Well, like just oh. like say we like. <laughs> I know you're singing and jumping. Like, <laughs> Might not be awesome. Don't but knock stuff over, but um, no. I mean, like, what if we just like knock these all the courses? out, yeah, and then come back? Cause I we set Katie up to sing the song, and okay. we set up the Neumann U67 alongside the Rode K2. Yeah. Can we go through the song once, the whole song, just to get levels? Yeah. And yeah. you go easy, like you both of those went through AML 1073 clones into distressors on the opto setting. Jump in the swelling line. The K2 has like this really nice brightness to it, but it's somewhat lax in like the lower mids. For the vocal, I kind of really wanted that to stay in there because that's where you can kind of hear a lot of like character in a voice. So we ended up just completely using the U67 for all of Katie's vocals. When I wrote the songs for the record, I was sort of hyper-focused on writing about like this specific thing that I went through. It's hard for me to see it outside my own experience because it's just so real to me, but some of the things that the songs are about and what they're saying and the energy of the songs, I feel like are super relatable for a lot of people right now. You know, the whole world is just crazy right now, and it was really crazy then, too. And so when I listen back to it all now, it's honest and it's angry, and I think that it could be applied to what everybody's sort of collectively feeling. Through writing a lot of the songs on the record, I feel like I have a newer sense of agency. This song is sort of like the tail end of those feelings being channeled into like a pretty earnest, like straightforward song. Coming back to Minor Street and getting to re-experience that energy. It's really pretty, pretty special. Perfect. Perfect, yeah. Oh, cool, okay, great. Um, <laughs> do you want to come in and hear it? Yeah, let's let's do that, and then we'll, we'll decide what needs yeah. to happen. Okay. So, yeah. Earthquaker sent us a transmitter resonant reverb. Resonance is usually something I'm, like, fighting against in a mix. But this pedal is overtly doing exactly that through a reverb, which is a very pronounced effect. It's awesome, it sounds really interesting. We ended up using it on some of the more legato elements of this song. Leads at the end of the song. And then we put it on the backup vocals and that's paired with the Leslie. The day before we started yesterday's session, I played a benefit show for two local organizations in DC that are really, really great, Casa Ruby and One DC. I don't know, it was like just a really inspiring experience. With the inauguration happening, it was kind of like exactly where I wanted to be. You know, when it comes down to it, we need more things that sort of help us assert the importance of just interacting with people. 
I'm such an optimist. I, I feel very optimistic about where the world is going to go. I think it's going to drive an incredible number of people in the world to be active and to make change happen in a really great proactive way. I'll be really curious to watch this episode knowing what I know about the day it was recorded years from now. Playing shows and concerts and offering music. It's just one way that I can help. It's not much, but it's basically doing what I already do for a living in order to benefit organizations that are doing a lot of good in the world. I think that that's a great place to start. There's a lot of bands that have drums, bass, guitar, and vocals. But there's really only one band that has Katie's singing, personality, melodic style, and that's Waxahachie. What really makes it special and perfect for today is that she is the one doing it. And you can hear her human personality at the core of what is being delivered. It's not generic, it's Katie. Weathervane's Shaking Through series exists to support self-expression through the creative process of making and recording music. To download the multi-tracks recorded for this or any episode of Shaking Through, or to learn about Weathervane Music, a nonprofit that produces this series, you can follow the links on the screen or go to weathervanemusic.org.